Hello, everyone. Welcome to Telling Tales. Welcome to Simbroom, and welcome to me, Matt, your game master for the evening and all evenings of Simbroom um, forever. If you think that you've seen other people do it, you're mistaken. It's just me in a horrible flesh suit. So, what have we got for you tonight? More dark fantasy from the wonderful system from Free League. Uh, more of Wrath of the Warden, the first part of Throne of Thorns. And uh, more of all your favourite telling tales, people. Um, and, well, you might have other favourites. These might be kind of the the, the lower tier. They're, they're at least like A or B or something. So um, you're just going to have to make do, is what I'm saying. Uh, before we get started and before we start bringing people on for recaps, let's get on with a lovely promo. Uh, so down below, there's a bunch of links. There's links to our Twitch and to our YouTube. You're watching this on one. Please consider checking out the other. Uh, links to our social media, our Patreon, our Discord, all doing the things you might expect from those particular services. Links. Um, no, that's it. That's it. That's all the links. I don't need to talk about any more links. That's enough. No more links. We run three weekly streams here on Twitch, um, each of them starting at 8 o'clock p.m. GMT. Mondays is usually Shadows of Estrin, um, although it's umming and ahhing about being on Tuesday t uh, temporarily, uh, but just follow us on um, Twitter or Discord and you'll be able to catch up with exactly what the timings of those things are. Uh, Wednesdays is Simbroom, Thursdays is Cincinnati Chronicles, which is our World of Darkness anthology series. And on the first weekend of every month, we also run a special one-shot. Um, if you're keeping up with your calendars, you'll realize that that's this weekend coming. And indeed, on Sunday the 6th, we will be playing Tales from the Loop, which is a wonderful system also from Free League. I will be running that. Um, so join us for that this Sunday at 3 o'clock GMT. Um, other time zones are available. 10 o'clock EST and probably some other time zones as well. Uh, there are other time zones. They do exist. I'm reliably informed. So, uh, with that in mind, let's start bringing on the players and giving our recaps from last time. And we're going to begin this week with Stephen. Um, Stephen plays Elindra, our uh, resident former Templar novice, and easily, I think, the most casually violent member of the party. Um so, you were on your way back from Blackmoor, uh, where you'd squashed a cult with the help of the town guard. Um, yeah. How did, yeah. How did it all kick off? That's right. A against all the odds, um, we actually managed to uh, achieve the thing that we wanted, which was to capture the leader, um, whose name was Gallimar. Uh, and on the journey back, we kind of interrogated him a bit. Um, he had built the cult to protect his mother who had gone into Davakar one time and been attacked by some kind of special Davakar bees and turned into a kind of enormous monstrosity, um, which didn't make us feel great about what we'd done, sort of kicking over his cult, but um, th there we go. Um, the other thing that we um, asked him about was, I can't remember. <laughs> It was the note. The note. That was it. Yes, yeah. we found a note in the burnt remains of his tent, um, which appeared to be a list of names, which included some of our names, um, and was signed by sent sent by somebody uh, calling themselves the Prince. We uh, we interrogated him about that, and um, he didn't give us very much about the actual identity of the Prince. I don't think he knew, except that it's a kind of a known figure to lots of people and that when he came and asked you to do something you did the thing uh, we spoke to Marvello about that as well who said that he'd heard the name and was like you know it could be could be someone could be nobody but yes it's a name that that carries some weight regardless and that was yeah it's heard on the the mean streets of of this little hold that's right and that was that was about all that we got out of Gallimar I don't I mean I don't think he liked us very much. No, probably not. You just burnt his mum. So, um, yeah, that that was pretty much it. And uh, you arrive back in Thistlehold, and to take the uh, the next section is someone who uh, literally just tried to make me corpse on stream by uh, writing an Arrested Development reference in our private chat. Uh, it's John. Uh, John plays Sir Aaron Dar, last scion of House Dar. And um, probably the safe to say the kind of opposite of Alindra at the moment in the least casually violent. 
uh, member of the party. Um, John, what, uh, what occurred next? Uh, so after arriving back in Thistlehold, uh, Marvello stopped back to talk to us briefly to basically say, so what's this I hear about an elf? Because Alinda had not been particularly quiet on the journey back. Um, so that's out of the bag. And he basically, he said he was going to go straight to the Queen's Legate to get that appointment that we wanted. And will help us if we stop hiding things from him and also report into him every couple of days. So now we've got to remember to do that. And hopefully it'll be worth it. And then we went to the pub to talk things over about our next steps and kind of realized that the only thing we've, the only lead we've got still to chase, other than an appointment with Cargoy Salamis in two days and the Queen's Legate. And other than that, we can just rest for a couple of days, wait for the appointment, and wait for the Queen's Legate to contact us. Yeah. And that was it. Uh, in those two days, most people rested. Uh, myself and Anton went in search of Father Savello and we didn't find him. Uh, but at the mission house, found it under repairs and spoke to one of his theurgs. Do they count as a full theurg? Uh, it depends. Th this person was wearing novice robes, I think. Okay. It spoke to one of Savala's um, novices and kind of pledged my support to protect him um, on the condition that I could talk to him about his mission in Blackmore. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that won't come back to bite you later. No, I'll be so, fine. Yeah, some other people did some other stuff, but I think that was the that was the kind of plot, the main kind of plot related um, escapade that people got up to in a couple of days. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, let's bring on our third player, Chris. Uh, Chris plays Steo, curmudgeonly former infantryman turned cell sword, um, and someone who has to roll a die at the beginning of every day to see if he's just elderly and shit out of luck physically and mentally so Chris, it's all right uh, and he plays steo too eh <laughs> yeah and in yeah. the game yeah go on then give us your recap so um we find ourselves chilling at mother Mahira's, kind of preparing for for the what we what steo was assuming was going to be a pretty bloody showdown at, at, at um kind of serex atio and cargo salamis's posh not cult, but kind of really sketchy zone house in Uptown Thistlehold. But that's a story for a little bit later, because on my way down to catch up with the group and maybe get some last minute um, Dutch courage in, we um, I was ambushed, ambushed? I was spoken to on this. I was Boris Johnson ambushed on the stairs by um, Captain You were Mardello. in a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> they pulled a cake on you? <laughs> they pulled a Freaking cake on me. Um, no, Captain Marvello um, turned up and said that we are go for the um, uh, the, the 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 meeting with the legate uh, tomorrow. Um, okay, then tomorrow some dawn. non con dawn. Um, dawn. Then some non canonical puns happened, which we have omitted from the record. Uh, under forever GS. struck down. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we moved on. Yes, and speaking of moving on, here is Sam. That sounds weird. Like he's going to be, we're going to fire him. Um, <laughs> here's Sam, who will not be fired. Uh, our next player, oh, who plays Askarai. We wouldn't fire you so soon after we redid your character art. Don't worry. Um, yeah, Askarai is a changeling and a scout and a bowman. And um, please give the recap, but please also tell the the wonderful people. Uh, at home, what ability you bought with your XP before this session because right. basically prepare for all combat to be over in two rounds. <laughs> yeah, for this session and this session only, prepare for me to now be the most casually violent, even ahead of Alindra, in order to test out my new ability, um, which is my, my ranged attacks with my bow basically no longer are affected by armor. So they just go through all the armor, do loads of damage, very nice. That was basically Askarai's one uh, kind of weak point, and now 
uh, is a strong point. So that's good. Um, for the weak re- point becoming a strong point, ironically, is kind of like armor. <laughs> True. True. Which Ascro and I ignore. Um, so for the recap, we basically, with a little bit of trepidation, although assured by partly Aaron and partly Matt, the game master, that we were not going to be killed. Um, we went to this, uh, the house of um, the guy. What's his name? I forgot. Cargoy his name. Salamos. Cargoy Salamos. Um, I think it was near or a kind of a similar house to the one that he previously owned and we had killed everyone in the basement of. Um, and when we arrived, we were met by a guard whole with a with a jackar uh, on a on a leash, I think, luckily for us, um, and kind of led through this uh, it's quite nice, nice ish, if slightly scary house um, up into a room with Cargo Salamos. Serex Atio and a woman who I believe is Roya Garlaka. Correct. Um, who were all kind of members of this uh, like noble group of friends who probably fought in the war and did some stuff. And uh, we had a nice discussion with them about what would happen next. Absolutely. And to talk about that discussion, uh, let's bring on Mike, uh, fan favorite Mike. Uh, uh, well, Anton's the fan favorite. I don't know how they feel about Mike. Um, Anton, uh, Theurg, holy man, uh, increasingly giving way to um, a kind of like sort of well-meaning fanaticism. Um, yeah, hi, Mike. You've you've made a skill purchase as well, haven't you? I have. Uh, I've gone for the next level of Blessed Shield, which is quite exciting because it means that I get a D6 uh, extra armor roll, and I can include someone else in that as well, an ally. So I've really, I'm really holding all the cards now because I'm f- basically forcing people to be nice to me. Yeah, just looking for it's basically it's the the canoe incident all over again, isn't it? Like it is, yeah. Incident. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, why don't you tell us how this meeting went, Mike? Um, well, I mean, we were there to. Uh, to, to, to find out exactly what this uh, chap was up to and if we could get him to, to stop uh, doing what he was doing, which is sucking Father Silver over. And he didn't really tell us why he's doing it or who's behind it, who's above him in the chain. Um, but uh, he did agree to stop doing that on the grounds that we gave him the name of the person who ordered us to investigate all of this. And there was a bit of a, an internal discussion in the party, and we did eventually decide to tell the truth and come clean and say that it was De Saber, the living saint, the light bringer, who uh, ordered this. And he seemed happy with that. Um, well, he didn't seem happy with it. I suspect he's not ever one to really show his emotions. But, um, yeah, he, he he basically agreed to uh, to not go after Father Savarada anymore. Um, and... That is, and then he kind of walked off uh, and, and left us with a, a wonderful feast, which I don't think any of us really had the appetite to eat after we left. Um, and that was it. Yeah, that was pretty much it. You walked out onto the streets of Thistlehold. Um, and it also occurs to me that in going through those um, lovely recaps also, um, I forgot to mention it because it was a big game of the recap and I wasn't thinking, but Stephen has also bought uh, a new ability. Why don't you let us know what that is, please? Yeah, um, Lynn just uh, picked up the adept level of two-handed finesse. Um, so that's the, um, that's, the, that's the skill which previously meant that her big sword counted as long for all kind of pointy purposes. Um, <clears throat> now, if she successfully defends, she can do a a strength test to uh, to use the sword to push an enemy back, do d6 damage in the process, and then they have to re re engage or I guess go and attack someone else. Yeah, and obviously if they re engage, they face the the free long quality attack. again of a free attack. Yes, yeah, so it's pretty pretty damn strong, especially against kind of lower strength enemies. Yeah, um, I think. But even like because you're strong strong fifteen, right? Yes. 
Yeah, so. Alindra was very, very good at sort of hitting one enemy per turn very, very hard. And and I think as she's progressed, she's she's upped the number of people that she might be able to hit in a turn. So yeah, I was feeling just inadequate compared to Askarai, to be honest. Uh, don't we all? Um, don't we all? Um, so there we go. Um, that is uh, pretty much it. Uh, so let's pick up, um, I'd say more or less where we left off, but re realistically speaking, as you're presumably returning to either the agency or the Witch and Familiar, wherever you want to spend the night, um, is there anything that anyone wants to take care of, or shall we just basically move to the following dawn and the uh, appointment with the Queen's Legate? How, how late at night was this? I'd say, you know, it was evening, so I'd say, let, let's say it's like nine o'clock now. I think I would want to go to the Sun Temple and try and get a message to Desaber um, to to update her on what's happened. Sure. Because I would I would just feel incredibly guilty if I didn't act act on the information that we've just found out. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Um, okay, so um, and what I mean, what does that look like? Are you going there alone? Are you dragging the rest of the crew with you? What What does it look like? Well, I I, I'll, I guess. I'll yeah say to say to everyone like I really need to go to the Sun Temple and inform them about what's just happened. I can go alone; that's not a problem. You're welcome to come with me. Um, I'll obviously let you know if I speak to Disabled and she has anything anything to say about it. But it's uh, it feels like it's a duty that must be done. Yeah, I think we um, dragged her name into it. Probably shouldn't have. Um, there's there's a lot resting on you with that, Anton, so I'm happy to come along and at least back you up, second you, when you say it was a democratic decision. Hushed, whispered voices and hand signals. I will go. It seems the least we can do. Um, I think as the person that said her name I, I guess i'm obliged and i would not be left out i suppose that would that would be strange yes not going to see a light bringer when everyone else is yes You're that would be strange. more than welcome sadar thank you, you. weren't pre i think you weren't present when the last the group encountered disabled were you I wasn't present for the first, but I think I was present for the second. Okay, the return with like the sort of half half done job, as it were. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Cargoy's house is not that far from Sun Temple within Thistlehold, and it only takes you a few minutes to head there. Um, the Sun Temple uh, is a slightly less imposing edifice uh, at night. Um, the the sound of um, uh, sort of soft chanting echoes out from the the open doorway um as the uh, the novices clearly practicing their praises to a uh, prios um in the the sun temple itself are are creating quite a soft um non non-threatening noise i'd say it's not a particularly aggressive hymn though there are some like that um there's a couple of people roaming around uh, the courtyard, maybe seeking advice from a couple of theurgs who are still um, sort of up in the, the, the expansive candlelit interior, um, talking softly to them. There's generally a kind of hushed tone um, to the temple space at this time of night. Stood over by uh, the doorway leading to the kind of like winding interior that you've been in before is uh, what looks like a, a Templar novice. Uh, great. Well, I will go over. Um, I, I request an audience. Um, and actually, before I sort of say anything else, where did we meet to say before? I got the feeling it was in like a copper tower or something like that. Yeah, it was. Oh. It was in the uh, the kind of dome the, under the under the copper dome right atop the uh, the Sun Temple. Yeah, and it, it's not. I don't. I got kind of got the impression that it wasn't like common knowledge that the saber was in the sun temple, right? So like it might be inappropriate to just drop. Her you certainly. Well, you, you suspect that people who are at the sun temple know because okay. 
it would be a hard secret to to to, to keep. She was wandering through the the corridors of it um, when True. she took you down to the basements. Um, but it may not be common, hugely common knowledge in on the streets of Thistlehold. You certainly did not know. So yeah, okay. Well, I'll, okay. In that case, I will just drop her name. I'll just say um, I I'm looking for an audience with uh, Deceba. Um, uh, my name is Father Anton, and uh, I have have business that she's instructed me to complete um the uh templar kind of at, f at first you know when you mention her name he looks kind of like slightly taken aback and puzzled uh, and then looks across all of you and says all all right and kind of definitely looks a bit askance at um at alindra uh, and probably Askari as well and says well i'll i'll go ask father anton Father Anton, and you needn't worry about my companions. De Saber is uh, has met them before. All right, well, we'll see. I better not come back here and you've run off. He uh, kind of uh, turns and kind of un unlocks the door and, and steps through it, and is kind of immediately replaced on the other side by another. Uh, another Templar novice who steps out and stands, looking quite tired, it has to be said. Ilindra, you're well aware of these kind of like largely just discipline-based uh, duties that are given out of just stand in front of this door for 12 hours. Are we doing anything while we wait, or just... So... Is she going to be pleased or very not pleased with us, do we think? We did. Job's what done. Was asked. Yeah. Job's done. Okay. Fingers crossed. I think of the meetings we have had in the last week, this is the one I am least concerned about. I'm going to be completely honest. Well, you've, you've spoiled it now, Steo. <laughs> yeah, that's true, because we got away from the last one alive, which I was not expecting. The door reopens and out steps uh, a Templar, a different Templar. Um, she's a bit older than the others uh, and sort of looks around at the, the five of you and nods and says, all right, the Lightbringer will see you. Steps back inside. Um, she leads you kind of up and around those curving uh, stone steps around the outside of the Sun Temple's courtyard and up and up towards the space under the bronze dome where you met the Sabre before. Um, John, I know I didn't ask for the image, but why don't you find us? Uh, oh, lovely. John, so prepared. Um, so professional. You, uh, you head up to the top and you find that this area under the dome has been um, made a, a little more livable. Um, than it was before, like instead of kind of cloth partitions that uh, De Saber had before, these now there are kind of quite nicely carved uh, wooden stands that separate out a couple of uh, different areas under the, the, the copper dome. Um, and you can kind of no longer see kind of De Saber's cot where she sleeps or like a little table and desk for scribbling notes. Instead, you come out and in the space in front of you is that large table you were sat at before, but pulled over and kind of decorated a little more. There's like a little set, a little kind of candelabra on it um, um, and uh, sort of some place settings and stuff like that. It seems a little, it's not, you know, a rich... Uh, uh, decoration, but it seems a bit more livable um, and perhaps a more of an environment you'd expect for kind of such a paragon of uh, of Ambrian life. Um, I would like Elindra. Can you give me a vigilant role? Your choice of vigilant or cunning. I don't know what you better for you. Uh, they're both the same. Okay. They're, both, they're both ten. Is there any any modifiers on that? No. Okay. Well, Which one are you going to choose? <laughs> Uh, between vigilant or cunning, I think probably, probably vigilant because she's wary. But in any case, she needed a ten, and I got an eleven, so that's a oh, fail. Never mind. Um, so as you emerge into this space, uh, De Saber shuffles out a a small, uh, wizened and scarred old woman from behind one of the uh, the wooden uh, separators, uh, and 
sort of stands for a moment and takes you all in uh, and then gestures towards the table and says, please, please, uh, my dear, some light refreshment. Uh, the Templar kind of like looks between you all kind of slightly, um, slightly unwilling to leave you all alone with the, the, the light bringer and then unable to refuse the order uh, kind of retreats down the steps um, and you can hear kind of her giving some orders down below to someone to run and get um, something to, to, to eat and drink for, for six people um, I take it everyone is sitting yeah probably yep. after giving a, a pretty deep reverential bow on the first singer She kind of eases herself into the seat at the end of the table with a, a kind of uh, a, a, quite a kind of deep, um, obviously pained groan, uh, and then says, "I am assuming if you return to me, then there is either good news or bad." Um, I fear a little of both, actually, Your Holiness, um, and, and forgive our intrusion at this late hour. Um, the good news is that we have, I think, completed the task that you set us. We have ended the threat to Father Salvola, and we have assurances that there will be no more attempts on, on his life from that party. However... Assurances? So you were able to do this without further bloodshed? Yes, we were. Well, that is welcome news. But before we speak of welcome news... Perhaps you should let me know what's, what has gone ill in this. The individual in question, Cargoy Salamos, he would not uh, comply with our request for him to stop unless he got a name from us of who set us on this task. He guessed it was from within the church, he guessed it was either Father Alfino or yourself. And I told the truth. She seems to be kind of only half listening ever since you said the name Cargoy Salamos. Okay. I apologize. So my my name was spoken. I suppose this is unfortunate, but perhaps it is best that some things are out in the open. And if this is the decision you made, and it did not involve the shedding of blood, I can regret it, but not hold you accountable for following the teachings of Prios. I appreciate that. It was, uh, it, your name was not given willingly, um, but it should be noted that Salamos guessed that, that you might have had some involvement i'm sure he, he seemed maybe more satisfied that it came from you rather than Elfino. do you get the impression that if you had gate given father Elfino's name you would have had a harder time striking a bargain i, th I, I believe so i i think that this was the answer that he wanted I see. Well, Prios and his Church of the Sun thanks you for your service and for your faith, Father Anton. There will be some material war reward made available to you. I will have uh, one of my novices run it over to uh, the agency, perhaps? That, 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 that is not required, Your Holiness, but I thank you for that. And I hope that in days and, and years to come, you think of the good work we did here. Of course, I, I will, I do. She sort of uh, eases herself to feet to her feet with another groan and says, "Thank you." 
kind of uh, as this has gone on, like the 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 Templar returned with you know glasses of water and kind of small like uh, a small plate of fruit for everyone, um, and obviously um, you can have uh, refreshed yourselves with that should you wish. Um, but Desaber clearly considers the audience to be at an end, and does in fact look slightly eager to be doing, yeah, to be off and to further some activity that you're not sure of. Great. So we'll make a move. Yeah, you are escorted out of the Sun Temple uh, by the same um, Templar who led you up. And go on, you know, Stephen, I'll give you another one with a plus two. How about that? Cool. Vigilant. Mm hmm. Or kind of, whatever. Do you yes. get 13 this time? No, I got 20. Oh, well then. Um, um, you, yeah, you think this Templar is quite old to be a novice. <laughs> okay. Because cl clearly it's novices guarding, so. Oh, obviously so. novices guarding the Lightbringer, yeah. 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 Um. So, yeah, you head on out, uh, the doors are open for you, and you find yourself back in the courtyard of the sun. Oh, I forgot and then realized halfway through I actually neglected to mention to the Lightbringer the names of the cultists we require. I require dispatching. Perhaps... Something I can get the assistance from our other benefactors for instead. Oh, Aaron, you probably haven't heard of this particular nugget we discovered in our travels. Um, I have a list of four names of practicing dark lords who either survived or laid low long enough to, to make it north and are abroad somewhere in Ambria. And if you uh, want to know what my list of problems is, that's about at the top of it, despite the fact I forgot to mention it. I somehow have the notion that this information has been passed to someone, but I can't recall who. I think that because the, the Sabre agreed to take it, but kind of fobbed me off until the next time. Oh, I had okay. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. And that was my that was my moment. But it's I'm it's sure you could okay. send her a letter with the with the with the. I think we told the auto magic, hadn't we? I think so. Yeah. yeah. And we've been mm. brushed off as well by saying they use fake names all the time. I, I have some yeah. other plans for what to do with those names. Sure, they, but I'm sure I'm sure you could like send a copy of the letter to the Sabre or something like that if you if you so wished. You have. You have a list of Dark Lords, and you're wondering why so many cults are trying to kill you. They don't know we have the list. That's worse. That's worse, Dio. Isn't it? <laughs> Is it? I, I don't. It's hard for me to tell what's bad and what's good anymore, Aaron. <laughs> well. <laughs> Honestly, Chris, same. same. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we will dispatch these people. The, the problem is what we have right now. And maybe it is a list of four names, but it is a list of four secret names used among themselves. Deseba said this. I did mention it to her. She seemed Where? detached and disinterested at best. Where did this list come from, Steo? I've not. <laughs> a hole in Davakar. Like all bad things. Okay. Well, well, I had no idea. It wasn't a hole where you got it, but yeah. It was yeah. later a big <laughs> hole, yeah. But well, when I'll they got it, it was you of lots of very of small holes. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And then later I'll regale you of the story of that particular cursed village another time. Okay. And That's the fact cool. that we've just been walking around with this dangerous knowledge this whole time. It's dangerous. Yeah. I, do, I do love this kind of thing of the two new members of the party are like, you, you have what? <laughs> We've been stuff. trying to give it away and have not succeeded so far. Yes. The burden if, still if the apparently light... falls on us for some reason, as no one if the more light... responsible or, or authoritative is willing to take it from us. 
if the like, Lightbringer thinks it's trivial, I'll wait until I can give it to someone who might care. It's like halfway through a 70s uh, John le Carre spy novel, um, one of the members of the little spy circle casually reveals that Stalin's still alive and they have his address in their pocket. <laughs> that's that's going to be my comparison there. Um, so, uh, with that in mind, is there anything else we want to do this evening? It's getting kind of quite late now, if you want to be up bright and early, at dawn no less, for your appointment. Maybe it's time to, to retire. Yeah, to do a sleep. Okay, are we uh, tucking ourselves away at the agency again? I'm We're in doubt. I'm familiar, I think. Okay, fair enough. Split the party, good stuff. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, you can go sleep wherever you wish and there will be no horrible interruption in the middle of the night. Uh, and then you'll have to rouse yourself when it is still dark um, find your way to presumably some kind of common meeting point, maybe outside the Queen's Legation itself. Um, uh, as the sun is just about touching the edge of the sky and maybe kind of the light is peeking over the top of the, the wooden walls around Thistlehold, you all find yourself standing in front of the Queen's Legation, as I think I've mentioned it before, we've been there before, kind of quite in a, a kind of mundanely impressive stone building. Um with uh, stone steps down to the archive. Uh, and uh, when you enter, there is like a sort of front desk, which is uh, manned by one of the um, uh, archivists that you, uh, the clerks that you uh, met before, who does kind of, as you are presumably walk in as a group, does kind of definitely recognizes Steo and says, oh, hello. Oh, yes. Yes, you, you managed to get that appointment, didn't you? Yes, with uh, pulling some strings. Yes. Pulling some strings. Uh, well, uh, I believe she's up there uh, waiting for you with the captain. Um, he's kind of gestures towards a set of stone steps that lead up and around and says, um, have you have you met the uh, Queen's Legate before? I haven't. I, I, I have not. Well, uh, though she is of noble blood, I would advise you uh, not to bow. She um, f finds it very irritating. Um, it's almost entirely impossible to not ir irritate her, but just be 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 cordial and polite would be my advice. Okay. Thank you. We best not keep them waiting. Um, so you head on up and round those stone steps. Uh, a couple of floors, it leads up to a, a rather nondescript wooden door. Um, you can uh, kind of see light around the edges of it and hear soft voices from within. Sh shall we? Any plans? Do we knock? Of course would, we knock. Would that... Who does okay. it? I'll do, I'll do, I'll do it. Dunk, dunk, dunk. There's a, a momentary pause and then, oh, enter. Open the door and kind of let it, hold the door open and kind of bring everyone else in, kind of in guard mode to some degree. Uh, as you're walking in, uh, the voice says, quickly, quickly, you'll let out the heat. Come on. I assume oh, everyone is get getting it. in the room as fast as possible. Yeah. And I'll take that hint and close the door after me. Absolutely. You find yourself in um, a rather um, threadbare but uh, well-provisioned study, as it were. Um, there are many, many shelves on the walls with lots of different tomes and books and records of various kinds. There is a large uh, stone fireplace, which is currently uh, being stoked up to a roaring heat, which is quite nice. It's very cold and wet outside. Um by the first individual we'll have the image of. Could you pop the image of Surya up, please, John? So uh, she is a woman of somewhat um, indeterminate age, maybe of, of middle years in some way, quite um, almost kind of skeletally thin and tall uh, with quite close cropped hair, and uh, she's currently uh, kind of stabbing at the fire with a, a rather grumpy expression on her face. 
uh, and with her other arm kind of like wrapped around her. It's quite simplistic, but the, but also somewhat luxurious um, um, kind of uh, tucked robe um, and clearly feel, feeling the cold a fair bit. Um, the other individual sat over in the corner. Now, this is interesting. Can we flick to the other person, please, John? Because there is a captain in here, but it isn't Captain Marvello. Um, Chris, you will definitely know who this individual is because you have at a point in time worked for him before. Um, but maybe the others do too. I think anyone who has contacts in Thistlehold will at least have heard of him. But can we have an uh, image of Decamado up, please, John? Uh, this is Captain Decamado, um, a uh, again quite uh, slim individual. Um, he's not currently in his guard um, uniform, uh, but instead in quite sort of nondescript but well-made clothing. He has a, a quite uh, well-cropped uh, little little beard, and he sat in a somewhat comfy uh, but worn-looking. Uh, armchair. He has his legs crossed in front of him and is examining you all with uh, a kind of just a very slight smile on his face. You know, a sort of welcoming expression, but also quite vague. Um, Syria kind of turns round, uh, indicates a number of other chairs scattered around, which range from similar armchairs to um, uh, to Decamado to what are essentially stools. Uh, but there are plenty of them to, to drag around and sit yourselves. We'll go ahead and sit down. Yep, grab a chair. Yeah. Let's um, let's see uh, who gets the best and the worst chair, because that's just amusing to me. Um, <laughs> can everyone roll cunning, please? We'll, um, um, we'll see what the best and the worst successes are here. Try, try being a one, guys. Four. Four. <laughs> Just all the rolls that matter, right? <laughs> hey, the butterfly effects. This could snowball into some great friends. Sure. Oh, that's my feel. It's also the first roll of the day, so I am now cursed. Oh. Cursed by your choice of chair. Yes. Um, did I anyone else yeah. fail? I failed by one. Right. How, How much did two? you? Just... How much did you fail by, Chris? Oh, Lord, four. Okay. Well, then, Steo, uh, and perhaps this is what sets off your elderly for the day, Steo, is si having to sit your rather large form on a rickety stool for a while, um, which is no way to treat a, an, an, you know, an ancient bum uh, like yours. <laughs> uh, and Tom, on the other hand, manages to uh, find a little kind of wheeled armchair that looks, in all honesty, quite a bit more, even more comfy than Decamado's. So there we go. Um, yeah, Chris, Captain Decamado is one of the three um, city guard captains of the city. Um, his is the night watch. Um, you work for him occasionally. Seemed all right. Kind of a bit distant, a bit distant from the men. Um, yeah, he's, he's kind of got no particular reputation either way. Just give him a kind of captain somewhat. It's a tone which does not hide my surprise at seeing him there as well. He uh, kind of reaches over and, and seems to uh, grab a, a mug which has something steaming in it, some kind of uh, maybe, you know, kind of uh, some kind of tea of some kind, and kind of nods back at you and says, Sergeant? Uh, Surya kind of carries on poking the fire for a while uh, and then. Um, Kind of, is anyone going to voluntarily say anything? Because otherwise, it's going to be about thirty seconds of silence. It's fine if there is. I just want to know if you're going to speak before she does. I'm, I'm looking to stay out. I'm yeah, not entirely sure what we're doing here, so I'm <laughs> going to stay quiet. I think we're I've looking for a house to this... <laughs> Yeah, I've been warned that this uh, lady is somewhat irritable, so I'm not going to poke the. Um the nest sure um well after about 30 seconds she seems kind of satisfied with the fire and turns around and kind of not seated herself and says well if none of you are polite enough to bring up the subject at hand then i suppose i will who uh, let me do some uh some lovely random rolls i know how much we love those um being kind of ambushed 
by a character. Um, um, she turns slightly towards Alindra and kind of points one kind of bony finger and says, You, who am I? Uh, Saria, you're the Queen's Legate? What does that mean? That means that you represent the Queen? I suppose that will do, yes. This is Captain Decamedo. He is here as part of official business so that everything is clearly above board. Tell me what it is you want. I know what it is you want. I have had the note from the clerk, but tell me your own, with your own voice. Any of you, I don't care. We have a key that needs matched to a lock, and I will produce the ornate key that we had previously. I see a key to a lock. Is there a reason why you did not go to Night Pitch for this? He also has a copy of the town register. Um, at the time, it seemed like you were the more um, uh, pertinent choice for the matter. Um, we did put the, apl the uh, application for a um, audience in some weeks ago now, I believe. Uh, in yes, that time, well, we've learned... I'm sure time has disabused you of the notion that I am more approachable than Night Pitch. Nevertheless, here we are. Marvello has spoken for you. Of what we know about the key's owner, um, we believe this may be... Oh, my God, it was literally just on my screen two minutes ago. Anadea. Yeah, we believe this may be a key uh, relating to a lady by the name of Anadea, a um, hmm, member, look to John quest, questingly, of the Erebus line. In disrepute, I should say. Mm. Oh, unacknowledged. Oh, an offcut, a bastard. All right. I, I I will be honest. I have little patience or interest in fortune hunter business. The 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 pertinent answer is yes. You will be given uh, access to the register, or rather, the answer you seek. You have a key. You wish it matched to a lock. This will be provided after service has been rendered. Official service. Oh. You, the... The noble. Yes? Who do I represent? The queen? There is a job. A service to be done. By someone... Who whose service you should be interested in seeking. We are not stupid, yes. The, these things are clear. Without being spoken. Such business yes. is of utmost importance to me. That is good to hear. Oh, this is tiresome. Captain... She turns around and starts kind of stoking the fire again. Uh, the captain uh, kind of smiles faintly and uh, sets down his uh, mug of tea. He sits forward in the armchair and kind of folds his hands and says, I will address the sergeant. With no offense to the rest of you, he's simply the man here I know. There is something that requires recovery currently within the walls of Thistlehold. It is, as we speak, according to our information, in room number three of the Winged Ladle Inn. It is a wooden crate, which you will acquire and hand over to myself within 24 hours. The wooden crate has something in. 
while I can give you some small extra details, should you want them, the specifics of what this is for, anything it may mean, and why you are being asked to do this must and will remain undiscussed. Who would be, who is in charge of the crate at the moment? Do we have any idea? Three Templars. Ah, firebrand types, the ones from the hole, perhaps? Yes. You met them? We crossed their path during the event. Well then, they are still here. For reasons unknown to us. How large and how heavy is the crate? It is... Uh, this is actually something that's literally described. Um, and if you give me one second... Good lord. I can't believe <laughs> I can't find the really specific measurements of the crate. Uh, one second. How wonderfully atmospheric. Decomedo just kind of zones out for a moment. Yeah, he's just staring <laughs> into thin air. Just... Uh, <laughs> lost in his fascination with the size of the crate. Um, there we go. It is one pace long, half a pace wide, one foot deep. It will be heavy. May I make... Is it delicate? Somewhat, but not perilously so. May I make the assumption that the Templars will are, are we are expecting them to resist its um, relocation? Given the somewhat delicate nature of this task, we would prefer if it was acquired without their fervent defence. But if that does happen, you will not be held accountable. Are these Templars still Templars? Yes. Are there any more questions? I think I've enough to give it the old uh, Ambrian go. Good. If you are found out directly or are caught by the city guard, the deal is off. Should you say something about the involvement of myself, the legation, others, you have made a deadly enemy of me and of someone else. It's to be delivered here. Salons of Simbaroom. Ask for the captain's room. Well, it seems we have an accord. Marvello spoke very highly of you. I'm sure you will be up to the task. We'll do our best, sir. 24 hours. The captain's room. Thank you. Shiria kind of turns around from her poking of the, the fire and goes, mm. kind of just gestures towards the door, essentially. Get up and leave. Yep. Okay. You emerge from the study. Um, 
in, uh, are immediately cold <laughs> after leaving the warm confines of the the, the legate's uh, room. I'm assuming there's not going to be any conversation until we um, find we'll ourselves the building at least slightly yeah. more private place. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm happy for you. Let, let's say because this is the area of town where there's like much more gardens and things like that, and small like little enclosures of of trees and things. I'm perfectly happy for you to find like a little like side side uh, alley where there's like a side avenue more where there's some trees maybe planted in a, a very very small park. You know, just like more of like a patch of grass for you to uh, kind of stand among the uh the slightly skeletal trees at this time of year in the the soft rain and maybe discuss what just happened before you um start making a move on it in any way everybody always wants something don't they i can't believe marvello keeps putting us up for fucking sneaky work i can't believe we're doing something to try and help this or hold and people still want some more work out of us but i guess it's to be expected now work reclaiming an unspecified artifact that uh, is contained within a wooden crate i do not like this already look in fairness anton none of the artifacts we've worked so with so far have been pre-specified so After some of the things that we've had to do for Thistlehold over the last few days and weeks, some theft seems comparatively straightforward. Would that we were equipped for silent running, I suppose. I think Alindra, yourself and myself will be on a distraction duty. Yes. That's where this one's probably going to be. If it's a heavy crate, I think we probably need two people to pick the crate up, but you are absolutely right. We need a distraction. We're not going to sneak in there at night time and have Given two of us cart that out. We need to we need to catch them when they're out and about, when they're down at the bar and give them reason to be away from that room. Don't strike me as the drinking sort. Could we okay, we are we are time limited, so maybe we could call to the temple and try and get some information on, on, on the brothers. But they, they they're somewhat renowned, aren't they? No one here has heard of them. So we only saw them at the battle and that's kind of really mm -hmm. But if we start asking questions about them, will that not raise suspicion. The key point here is that uh, the connection and the requester for this work remain um, surreptitious. Our job itself can be maybe a little. What are you, are you suggesting, Stia, that we go and talk to the church to find out more about these Templars for for reasons, and then within twenty four hours, word gets round that they've been robbed. Yeah, do you know what? Fair enough. Much as we are on important business, they're not going to stick their necks out for us. Just one other thing. We're, I'm aware this is pretty much as high as you can get when you need to ask a favour from this old man. But um, I definitely want to see what's inside that box. <laughs> I agree, though. I think once we're not going to get away with keeping it, whatever it is, but it would be good to know. Did he say not to open it? He did not. Neither did I ask. He did not expressly say that. I I think we'll regret it, but I know we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, look, if I've learned anything from dealing with things that are called artifacts, it's that the earlier you discover what it is, the better prepared you are when the abominations arrive looking for it. Okay, um, with all that in mind, and I don't, I am in no way railroading, you can go do what you want, but we, we did discuss a, a little side thing to the Sun Temple, and that was very swiftly dismissed, and I'm assuming that if we're not going anywhere else for help or aid, then basically what we're going to do is go to the Winged Ladle Inn, I'd assume. 
Yeah, Is that the idea? Lunch. Scope the place out and all. Yeah. Just to have lunch there. <laughs> Breakfast, it will be. Well, yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Absolutely. John, you have an image of the winged Leyland, and anyone who's browsed a number of Simbroon books will immediately recognise this art. Um, and it is the winged ladle in. So, uh, oh. in the uh, southeast near the east square of uh, Thistlehold is remains a number of large trees, this being the largest, and in its branches, um, formerly uh, an, uh, rumoured to be an abode of the barbarians who lived here um, back before the Ambrians arrived. And hey, we know a little more about those guys now, don't we? Um, there is the Winged Ladle Inn, now a somewhat luxurious uh, place for people to eat and stay. If you look carefully at the art there at the bottom left, you'll see a kind of set of um, wooden stairs kind of carved and placed around the trunk and leading all the way up. Uh, once you get all the way up, that's um, kind of peaked um, in the front there. There's actually a couple of annex buildings at the further back. It's basically a huge tree house um, on very large, sturdy wooden platforms um, known for, you know, privacy, security, and um, just being generally a pleasant place within Thistlehold if you have the money. Um, in fact, one of the former guests of there is rumoured to have been Queen Corinthia herself. And there you are. And that's probably about how um, how busy the streets are at this time of day as well. So there we go. Oh, this is, this is going to sting financially. So getting a crate out of there quietly is harder than I anticipated. <laughs> I and didn't a actually. Somewhat fragile crate as well, I think you said, right? It's not something that we could be totally reckless with. Uh, I'm not yeah, sure that we should we're throw it out the, the street, no. And not something you can easily hide under a, you know, a coat or a cape or something. It's it, it's going to need two people to carry or one strong person slowly, and it's got to come down that staircase. You're on mute, Matt. Yeah, from, from kind of looking at it, you get the kind of feeling that this may be why Decamedo did not, in fact, prohibit you from opening it, because he was aware that that might have to happen um, for you to get the stuff down. So, if... Okay, first first order of business, Alindra, you're eating for free today. Everyone, um, and, and Dar, I suppose you didn't get any of the Simbaric money. Before we go up there, Let's think about this a little bit more. Is there a smart way to get this crate out of here? Hidden, disguised in some way, but in a safe manner. Ideally, not being pursued by three extremely angry Templars. I could we... It Could we enter this place on the... Uh, 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 with the illusion of us making a delivery or picking something up, maybe carrying a larger crate ourselves or a barrel or something like that. Something that we can then use to smuggle this thing out of so that we are not spotted carrying a crate with us. How do they get barrels up there? That's a very good question, Aaron Dahl. Why don't you roll cunning? I do not make it by quite a margin. Never mind. <laughs> I guess they just carry them up. <laughs> Come on, Aaron. It's probably a winch. Um, I didn't twig that it was this place when he said the name. Um, this It's a place known for its security. They must have deliveries, as Anton says. Yeah, it's an inn. They must have deliveries of food and drink. And I think equally... it, I, yes, and I think you're onto a good idea. I also would quite like a fancy breakfast if I want to be maybe somewhat more um, circumspect. I also think just an idea that sprung to my head. What if we go and buy a couple of a couple of sacks and a couple of empty. Um, crates, and then we can maybe do a misdirection play later on. I think 
I like barrels because I like the idea that that can be delivery. That would be about the right size. We'll maybe get some sacks just in case whatever it is won't go into a barrel. I wonder if we go back to the witch and familiar and see if we can buy some things to deliver here so that they're, they're getting actual, you know, barrels of, of, of beer and food. So don't fake a delivery, make a delivery. That's yeah. actually brilliant. And we're I mean, older. We, we are still a delivery that has in no way been requested. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so let's string this out. We go back to, oh, what's his name? Alarak? Alarak? Alamar. 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 Let's go to Alamar, see if he will help us. We'll not mention any names, okay? And if we can get, well, we can just buy the, the, the barrels off him. We then go to this place and say we have some of the finest barbarian ale. We would like to see if, if um, you would consider trying it with your guests and see what, what their opinions are. This Deception. is literally a plot from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I love it. <laughs> It's all got a bit heist movie. <laughs> I think that'll get us in a situation where we are. We can get in under the auspices of a delivery. Yeah. The, the can... problem then is that a delivery only buys us a few minutes there because yeah. at that point they will expect us to leave the produce and make our way out. If we, um, and Aaron, maybe I am mistyping you here, but if we can maybe wheel him and suggest that, um, well, now that the merchandise is delivered, can we perhaps stay for a late breakfast? And then we can at least get some time to sit down and prepare the next phase. See if they have any empties they want taken away. As in barrels. I also think at this stage, we should probably also bring up chests in 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 sacks and just say it's different merchandise for another job and then all we have to do is swap the chest into one of the sacks this i mean this hinges entirely on them uh, accepting the delivery us being able to pass ourselves off as people that know how to deliver to this pub we also um, and during the course recognizable. During the course of this delivery, we also will have to sneak into this room. We do also have to actually and steal the thing and distract the Templars thing. and get the stolen thing back hope... to some supply of things that we can then winch out of there. I hope that you don't <laughs> step into the common room and someone goes, the heroes of the sinkhole! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also, so none of you are barbarian. Yeah, but wheeler dealer trainers, I'm being traders, sure. it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your 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 thistle hole bellboy, sure. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> um I I unless anyone has an idea that doesn't involve a disproportionate amount of bloodshed. We don't need to get the artifact out of the pub. Not in the first instance. We just need to get it out of room three to somewhere else in that tree that we can that is hidden that we can pick it up later that's well another idea springs to mind because we need to buy more time inside the pub and so maybe there are two parts to this one is we have a crate or sacks or something that is sent to the pub in the guise of a delivery we also have someone uh looking to or two people maybe looking to stay there for a night um and they obviously have access to the the, the, the living the, the sleeping quarters uh have more access to that part of the pub a right arouse less suspicion in that way and well you know they can take baggage with them as well baggage with them as well okay i think i have a uh, perhaps a simpler idea that maybe would work. Instead of us buying uh, ale or whatever it is, we're fairly... We have a good deal of money at the moment. Is there a chance that a well-paced placed bribe to whoever is running this in at the moment would get us access to the room? Do you know what? <sighs> I don't know 
if we're quite at this tier of bribery yet. But maybe we could get it reimbursed, though, is another question. <laughs> it's expenses. Get a As though getting a receipt for a bribe. Yeah. No, we'll <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'll get expenses when going about the Queen's dirty business now. <laughs> Um, this we is need, getting yeah. a little more complex and unwieldy. Right. This is what we need. We need at some point we need, I think, two people in that room to move whatever's in it out. Right. We need one or two people by way of distraction, diversion, to ensure that the Templars are out of the room when that happens. And we need to get the item somewhere where we can later get it out. Now, if we can get it down to the cellar, I assume there is some kind of cellar here. There is somewhere where they store full and empty barrels. If we can get the artifact into an empty barrel, then it's subterfuge or it's bribery or it's something to be make sure that we're involved in the process of unloading the barrels. We don't need to deliver anything. Can everyone Maybe roll two. vigilant, please? Is it Linda talking too loud again? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, oh, hang on. I might have a uh, vigilant plus five. Ooh. Hmm. I need it. Make it like a three. Okay. Everyone but Aaron, which is appropriate because Aaron, you didn't meet them. Yeah, fair. Uh, everyone but Aaron sees coming down the long, winding trunk. Um, of the winged ladle, uh, two men, familiar looking to you, long hair, large, well built, um, wearing what is kind of basically um, looks very similar to Templar armor, but the tabard has been kind of like, um, or did they, did they have like a, a full description earlier on? It, it's two of the two of the three brothers, I essentially. Think featureless grey tabards as if I that think was... they did, but otherwise it looked kind of like Templar armour, but clearly yeah. they maybe didn't want to be seen as Templars or or something along those lines. Um, they walk down the, uh, the spiralling stair at the bottom of the winged ladle and walk, start walking across the east square towards the east gate. They, they are clearly armed, but do not appear to be carrying anything else. Two-thirds of our problem has just left the building. We need to... Okay, logic states we might want to tail them, because at least if we know if they leave past the gates, then they're probably gone for a good portion of the day. Why don't we go and knock on the room three, the door waylay whoever this the one brother left inside and just take the crate this is by far the simplest plan at this point it is five What's, of us uh, do matt Can do i, I know what well? the security is like here um you know what give me uh give me a cunning role and because of your former life as a, a town guard you can take a plus three to it cool cunning 11. Okay. Aha! Success! Yeah, so, like, um, you're sure, like, most times of the day, like, a fancy in like this will have kind of a bouncer substitute around, uh, but most places don't actually have guards until nighttime, because no one's gonna, no one's gonna run up the stairs in broad daylight and barrel in and, and do something as foolish as attacking someone or stealing something. Um, so, yeah, there are guards at the wing ladle, but they'll, they'll be there at night, not during the day. Okay, here's the rub. I mean, people ask have personal guards, but that's another matter. Ask or I, would you be so kind as to tail the two brothers and confirm that they leave the gates, leave through and depart? I think the rest of us um, it's breakfast time. can go and get some breakfast and wait for Ask or I's return. Okay, I will do my best. Okay. Um, so let's have, uh, yeah, Aaron, Steo, and Tom and Alindra. You're all ascending up to the winged ladle, I assume. Um, it's it's not an not an inconsiderable trudge. 
up to uh, up to the winged ladle. And any of you who are slightly low on cardio or slightly uh, leery of heights will not find the 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 activity particularly pleasant. Uh, but once you do, you're on that kind of like wooden platform with the rail looking out really over the entirety of Thistlehold from this height. Um, the, there's only a few buildings higher than this. Obviously, Night Home is a couple of the guard barracks, the Order of Magic Tower, the Sun Temple, and obviously the always uh, glowing, flaming beacon um, lighting the way over Thistlehold uh, as you know a torch against the darkness of Davakar. Uh, but otherwise, it's, you're pretty much higher than everything else. Um, you... Uh, as I said, there's like three buildings on top of this place, and you kind of emerge up round the stairs into uh, what is essentially a, a boardwalk between the three of them. Uh, what the one, the large actual into the front of you, and the others uh, one to each of your rears, and you have to essentially walk round uh, the boardwalk to the other side of the inn to the front area that was like the front on that image that we saw. Um, and you walk in the doorway. There is a, a large individual in um, quite uh, unpleasant-looking crow armor stood behind the door who kind of glances over each of you uh, with some kind of level of wear wariness each as you enter um, and then kind of looks slightly confused that, you know, there's a theurg with you and, and someone who looks like a noble and um, it just all seems like a bit of an odd mishmash um, and then decides that clearly you're not immediately causing trouble and, and kind of uh, sits back and, and just kind of watches you as you enter. There are a number of uh, large uh, tables in here. Uh, quite a few of them are already occupied, mostly with people dressed quite a bit nicer than you yourselves. Uh, but at least one other one is like, you know, there's a, there maybe a guy at a lone table who's clearly a fortune hunter um, of some kind and is dressed as such, maybe just come here with to, to spend his earnings from, from Davakar. Um, so it's not entirely... Um, you know, posh and noble surrounds. Um, yeah, and there is a, a, a large counter for you to order your drinks and food, and then go have a seat, I guess. So I'll kind of um, get drinks and food. I'll also inquire for the price of room. Okay, let's have a look at... Because um, I think sim oh, there is actually a table that specifically has, like... Um, Price per night, yeah. Price per night for different Thistlehold establishments, I think. Oh. Um, so if someone wants to have a, a wee look for that while we... Uh... You know what? Someone can go have a wee look for that while we go with Askarai, shall we? Um, if, in... if not, there is a... Sorry. Is it in one of the, the core slash advanced books, or is it... Oh, it might be in Wrath of the Ward, and I don't know. Um... I can check that, if, if you want me to. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, you know what? Food and... F food and drink. Um, now th there is a rough thing in the equipment, but I am interested. I'm pretty sure there's like a there it's is a like a thing, a table somewhere. There's a table, the page fifty one of the rule book. I don't know if it's got this specific place. Fifty one. Lovely. Uh, yeah, it does. The wing ladle exclusive. Uh -huh. um, so the answer, Chris, is it's a thala per night. I will um, book myself in. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely going to book myself in and make inquiries about. Um, is, is there like a, a floor plan just so I can see where where, where the rooms are laid out? Because I, 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 if I'm if I'm spending the big money, I'd really like to to get like sunset or sunrise or whatever's available. Uh, the uh, man behind the counter says, "Oh, I'm an appreciator of things of 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 beauty." Uh, how interesting he sort of looks slightly askance at your your armor and general sweaty presence uh, mm. and says well there's there's no room plan um sir but um i can give you a, a very uh, a very nice room in one of the annexes perhaps one in the very same building that once housed a certain royal personage Okay, okay, that sounds good. I was going to be um, persnickety about uh, about locations, but that sounds very obviously exciting. not the very room itself, sir. That is always reserved. <laughs> oh God! 
my 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 ship came in a few weeks ago, so I, I was from um, from Davakar, so I have a little bit of money, and I always wanted to know what it was like to stay in such a nice establishment. Of course, sir. We, we will happily um, take your coin and food and and drink for you and your companions. Yes, yes, please. Wonderful. Um, he kind of serves you up some initial uh, food and drink, and then uh, goes back to to kind of give an order. And I'm assuming you're you're joining your friends over the where whatever table they've settled at. Yep. Kind of sitting down and proudly saying, "Well, <laughs> assuming everything goes well, I'm going to stay here tonight." Um, can everyone who's not Steo please roll uh, vigilant, please, and not obviously not Askari. Make that's it. A- that's a pass. Okay. Anyone who passed notices that when Steo kind of turns away with like a couple of um, tankards, the uh, the man at the bar kind of kind of watches Steo walk away and goes, <coughs> kind of <laughs> reaches down to um, kind of put the put the coin behind the bar. Um, so, out in the East Square. Um, Askarai, could you roll discreet for me, please, at a plus three? Pretty, right, pretty nice. good. I need a 16. I got a 20. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, uh, oh, you don't have any XP left, do you? Nope, zero XP. Spent it all. <laughs> Spent it all. Great. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful. So, um, you, uh, let's say, um, as you're kind of walking along the East Square, um, you, the, the brothers kind of come to a halt, uh, further ahead of you. And one of them kind of like, they come to a halt quite suddenly as if kind of discussing something uh, that they're mildly disagreeing on. And one of them kind of turns quite swiftly and, definitely kind of catches sight of you enough to kind of wrinkle he seems to kind of wrinkle his brow as if thinking where he knows where he's seen you before okay I think <laughs> I'm I'm trying to check if they go out the gate this way so I think I would just carry on get to the gate or near the gate and see if there's an appropriate place that I could just to wait yeah, yeah exactly and uh sure sure why don't you give me? I'll give you a chance to to get out of this. Uh, why don't you give me a cunning roll? Okay, that's trickier. I need a ten, I think. Yep, I need a ten. I got a nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> um, you go uh, near the gate, and perhaps you're, um, you know, the stables are near the gate, so uh, you maybe head over to there and kind of start. Uh, maybe kind of looking. They they usually have horses outside, like essentially horses for rent or for quick purchase. And you you're kind of like looking over one of them uh, and kind of patting at it. Uh, and as you do so, literally the brothers walk like there's a horse between you, and they <laughs> like a low horse as well. You know, a horse you can peek <laughs> over. And uh, they just walk to the other side and start saddling up two horses that are presumably their own. And one of them turns to you and kind of wrinkles his brow again. And then and then there's a kind of realization and he just goes, just nods to you, <laughs> kind of in recognition. You know, you both fought together at the sinkhole. I will nod back, um, you know, raise my hand and then uh, carry on patting this horse that I'm <laughs> patting for God sure. knows what reason. Sure, absolutely. Um, just a stellar job here. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you do see, because they're not going to just not go because they recognize someone they once fought beside. Um, they are going to saddle up their horses and they do, they don't ride fast. They just kind of like uh, trot slowly uh, out of the East Gate and not off down kind of the uh, the East Road. Askrai sighs very deeply and heads back towards the inn. <laughs> sure. Um, you make your way up the, the spiral stair of the wing ladle um, into that uh, common room that I described where you can see I, your friends sat around. Oh, unless there's anything else you want to do, sorry. Can I roll my resolute to try and look, using my shapeshifter, to try and look like, you know, maybe like a servant or something like that? Not sure. of this particular inn, but just a... Yeah. A general servant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Okay, I'll do that. Preparing for an 18, if it's <laughs> fitting the trend. 
I literally rolled an 18. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure you're actually rolling a dice? And are you not sure you're rolling? a changeling? I've just got to get At through this like, stage. like 10 more rolls sure and I'm going to be rolling great. Of a random number generator. <laughs> so um, I think what we were discovering slowly over the course of the past few sessions is that Askarai's shapeshifting ability suffers quite deeply from performance anxiety. Um, <laughs> and in this particular case, it has struck again. Yeah, you find yourself unable to, 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 um, you know, comprehensively control kind of the musculature of your face in the way that you would uh, do when you're normally kind of altering your appearance. Or no, sorry, it's more of a glamour thing, isn't it? So you know, you can't will yourself to appear other. Um, so nope. That's great. Size again, <laughs> and uh, heads up the stairs to. Try and find the others. Bet you're glad you spent that XP on that uh, on those 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 really <laughs> cool arrows, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, you emerge into the common room. Um, your friends are sat there having some food and drink. Uh, Askari enters, looking glum. I head over the table. To be honest, I have done a very poor job, but <laughs> they have left the gate. Okay, so just 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 for just to lay all the cards on the table, you didn't kill them, did you? No, although perhaps it would have been better if I had. They <laughs> what did you use them? They they clearly saw me. In fact, they were stood feet away from me, and so much as nodded and waved at me. Uh, yeah, it's things are going poorly. Hopefully, things will go better in the rest of our plan. At a lower tone of voice, no more sneaky missions for Marvello. We're done. <sighs> right. <laughs> I think, normally, I think I'll give, we give ask, sorry, ask right. We we normally retain comments for the very end, but we have to have this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a changeling, so he's probably Anton in disguise. <laughs> Seems reasonable. Thank you, Lauren. So I think um what well, I, I, I imagine the food here is pretty nice. Very nice, um, yes. And, and more is being I, served to you now, kind of like you know, fresh vegetables, fresh kind of very very uh nicely salted and seasoned roasted meat. Good stuff. So I've knocked a total of four thaler off my total for, for the purpose of, of all of this fancy, fancy good. dinner. Um, I will, however, about halfway through, detach and go back to to, to the the barkeep and ask if I can see the room. Again, looking much more excited than. Absolutely, and the the barkeep is happy to happy to do so, and kind of indicates to uh, a kind of a, a younger servant, maybe a, you know a, a girl of about sixteen, who uh, kind of escorts you out through the front uh, door and round uh, to the annex. And if you're looking straight on, it's the annex over to the right hand side. Uh, she leads you up some stairs and into a, a short uh, wooden corridor and opens the door to a room. It is uh, kind of a small, uh, quite, it's very nice, but it's quite a, a small uh, wooden room. It has a desk and a chair and a couple of uh, single beds uh, and kind of a wash basin and things like that. It, it's very pleasant. So I, I noticed you didn't describe any numbers on the door, which does kind of make sense. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I will happily describe numbers on the door if I can just do a bit of calculation here. Uh, mm, 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 uh, 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 uh. The number is 12. Okay. So I'll just... Uh, trying to make small talk. This might not work well. Um I will ask. So, so this is room twelve, and then that's thirteen. So, so how how how's the layout? Uh, oh, um, the num the numbers start in uh, in the inn itself, and then uh, over to the other annex, and then 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 to this one, sir. This is the 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 the, the larger numbers, ending ending with the queen's chamber. Thank you. Which, which I look down the corridor. Do any doors look super fancy, like they'd be a queen's chamber? The door at the end of the corridor is far more elaborately carved than the others. Oh, that must be the queen's chamber. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome, sir. She's loitering a second. 
sure i'll kind of like throw my stuff like start maybe kind of pseudo stripping my armor a bit like i intend to stay here for a while and hope she um oh wait she's loitering for a second i'm gonna give her a shilling there we go <laughs> uh she smiles and, and kind of takes the shilling and looks quite happy with that and uh, heads off perfect um can i i assume this place is fancy enough to have sheets Oh yes, yeah, yeah. It's all all fully laid out. I'm gonna try and secrete a sheet. Um, for I don't have a plan for this. I'm maybe it'll come in handy use later. I'm maybe just kind of under my 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 plates. I'm just gonna kind of pa pack a sheet. Theo's balling up a sheet and tucking it down his codpiece. Um, yeah, pretty. Yeah, well, no, not, uh, not yeah, exactly. yeah. Sure. If you if you fold a sheet up, yeah, your your breastplate stands kind of proud of your. Um, of your chest a little bit, um, uh, especially since you're probably quite like a little bit, maybe a little bit pigeon chested as you as you've aged. So I think yeah. you can, yeah, fold up a, a sheet and like tuck it down the front of your yeah bre breastplate. Sure, is that I in place suppose... you need a parachute down off the? Kind of, yeah. Look, I don't have a plan yet, but maybe sure. at some stage later. I don't suppose there's a big room of, like like the the wardrobe is filled with with chests and 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 or sacks. No, no. Okay, well, there are no sated, complimentary sacks. Yeah, sated. I'll return to the table. I like how sure. we take you to a fancy hotel and you instantly like steal the bedclothes and presumably <laughs> the little sample soap. Sure. Um, yeah, you emerge back into the back into the common room. I'll return and go. Uh, okay, gentlemen, room number three is in this building. Um, I am not next to it, which should not surprise anyone, given that would have been absolutely dumb luck. There, uh, so out of this room, so we know there are two, three exits. One is to the to the boardwalk that you came in from. One is behind the bar. And the other one is not too far from where you are, and it's opened a couple of times as servants kind of uh, go in and out, and it seems to open to like a, a long wooden corridor that stretches kind of um, um, sort sort of parallel to the length of this room, like along the centre of this large in building. And presumably, uh, you know what? I think by now you've probably seen someone who clearly doesn't work here emerge from it as well, and go and sit at one of the tables and order some food. Perhaps we should just go and find. Room three. So we find room three. We can. I'm talking quietly at this point, by the way. <laughs> um, so we find room three. We can overpower and please not kill the, the one Templar we assume is in there. We can take the artifact. How are we getting it and us out of here? Because that's likely to make some noise and draw some attention. There is a guard here. I mean, this is assuming that we'll be able to take care of him without any noise. The other thing is, if we don't kill him, he's going to see us. And then we'll have problems later. No, we will have problems later. At this point, we are assuming that the third brother is in the room. It seems to make sense to assume the worst. We may get it, lucky. It does, but um, is there, and I'm just asking the question, is it worth finding that out before we do anything else? How would we find out? Can we draw them out of the room? Can we send somebody in there to knock on the door and give him some kind of message about something's happened to his colleagues? Who have just left on a horse. Perhaps there was an accident on the road. Perhaps they've been taken by the guard. Yeah. Since clearly they're up to some something what? serious with this crate been taken by the guard or yeah there was there was an accident one of us was a was a, was a witness and was asked to come back here and inform them so they could come out and help they guess I... it's an empty room that's one step closer 
loathe to volunteer someone, but um, Father Anton, usually in situations like this, it is the clergy who would run such messages if it is um, informing them of an accident. Aaron, could you roll cunning, please? Yes. No chance. <laughs> could we not just use a messenger? Surely there are messengers around. We've we've been we've had message messages delivered by That's also a fantastic idea. So I prefer this thinking. idea to lying before I rob someone. I think for my conscience it's only good to do one foul deed at a time. Okay. So we find a messenger, send a message saying they have been taken by the guard or they or what message are we sending? There's been an accident. A horse accident. And they should the problem go. is um, we're making assumptions that they're not going to twig to this immediately. Maybe they have better communications protocols between them, and perhaps we will end up alerting them to our presence or him to our presence. But I suppose then we just have to bump some heads. Yeah, best case scenario, there's nobody in the room. Second best case scenario, there's somebody in the room and we get him out of the room. Worst case scenario, there's somebody in the room and they're ready for us. But we would have, if we in that worst case, we would have to go and overpower him anyway. I think we, I think we, someone goes outside and hires a runner. I will go and look for a messenger at the very least. You on mute, Mike? Askarai, you are more than welcome to sit here and enjoy a drink if you so wish. I do not deserve a drink. <laughs> Man, that must have been uh, that must have been some trip to the stables. So, Man, a horse... ain't that a ki- ain't that a trip to the stables? <laughs> a horse-based accident, and. The most serious of all accidents that can happen on the road. Where are we telling him to go to resolve this horse-based accident? Eastgate, anywhere. <laughs> Ten horse pileup. <laughs> you there's said been an accident. Said, go to the. Yeah, East you gate. said they left by the east gate. Yeah, so just yeah. tell them the east gate. At least that'll make it seem like we saw them leave, which we did. Okay. It's also precisely where I saw them, but still. Well, whatever. Well, I'll, I'll I'll look for the messenger. I'll just head down the stairs and look for anyone who looks like a messenger. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's nearby. You know, an inn. It's quite a nice area of the city. There's a number of other inns and taverns nearby. Um, yeah. Just give me a vigilant roll. Seventeen. <laughs> it's a seventeen. I'm giving up. It's another eighteen, <laughs> which fails by three. You're the only person rolling tonight, Sam. Please, for the love of God. Um, there do not. Maybe it's the early hour, but there do not appear to be many uh, messengers around. Um, you can kind of keep on looking, but it'll take a while, or you can maybe uh, go roam to another nearby part of the city where you may be able to uh, find a messenger. I'm just. I'm going to keep looking for a message. <laughs> sure. Um, upstairs, uh, about half an hour has passed, and Askari and or a messenger has not emerged. He seemed very upset. He, I don't think he's having a good day. Do you think he's coming back? Ever. Well, I... Well, what, while he solves this problem, assuming, we... assuming the brother leaves the room, takes the bait... What do we do with a crate? We, I guess, knock the door down because we ain't picking the lock. We knock the door down. We get access to the room. We pick up the crate. And then what? Because we didn't walk in with a crate. And there's not that many people here. So how do we get out of here with a crate? I was wondering whether the room would have a window. 
all the rooms well, definitely have windows. You that can be seen them as you walk around the, the, the room. The, and um, in, yeah. Could perhaps fit a chest. They are thing. large windows, yes. You could if, if the window was no longer in the fitting or had a hole in it, almost certainly a crate could be passed through it, yes. Or it could mm. be opened. Or did, will these windows open? Uh, I mean, yeah, they probably do, windows. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and well, you know what? You've been in a room. The, the window in your room opened, so yes. So we we take the crate out the window. Dio goes and picks the crate up and puts it in his room. We now have it somewhere which is as secure as we can get it on the premises. We wait for a change in the guards later in the day. New guard comes in, doesn't know that Steo didn't come in here with a crate. The, the, you mean the bouncer? Yeah, sorry, the bouncer. But the bouncer's just in the. Well, he's the just like room. he's in the common room with us right now, right? Like he saw us. Yeah, but in. my point is, if you emerged from the the way the layout of the boardwalk is, if you if you basically got it onto the boardwalk, he would have no way of seeing you with the crate. You could just leave. Okay. okay. So we just need yeah. to get it out As, of room three. Yeah, the only and assumption out is out that, that building. Three, yeah, the only yeah. assumption is that room three has a window that opens onto the boardwalk and not onto a hundred and fifty foot drop. This would be a very, very easy thing to do by walking around the back of the building where you emerged up and just walking along that boardwalk and seeing like the windows there. I and think that's a good did. opportunity for. Yeah, I, I, I think I'll go and do some more sightseeing because that's kind of my my bit here at the minute. Sure, yeah, the tourist. Doing the tourist thing, absolutely. I guess... We'll go. Go ahead, sorry. Steve. I was going to say, I guess, I guess, Steve, I wouldn't be able to spot which room is room three from the outside unless it's like the one with the Templar in it. But, um, but, yeah. but maybe he can do that. Who knows? Um, so, Chris, why don't you, as you walk around the uh, the the boardwalk there at the back of the inn? First things first, can you give me a cunning roll, please? And I think it's quite a straightforward cunning roll, so I'll, I'll add a three to it for you. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, could you make me a vigilant roll, please? Uh, and that can have a plus four now. Hey, so... There are four Take windows that, at right. the back of this uh, at the back of this inn. Clearly, to your mind, this means that room three is going to be one of the two central windows, depending on which way the numbers are running. Makes sense. One of the window, one of those two central windows that you walk past, has the drapes drawn, but not enough that it entirely doesn't provide light to the interior. And on kind of like subtly kind of glancing through as you walk along, you see that in the room, you only get a quick glimpse of it, but there is a bed. There is a man lying in the bed. Um, that man has like, uh, he looks quite pale. He has long hair and a beard. You think you recognize him. And he has like a, um, like a, a, pul a healing poultice and bandages wrapped around his, his abdomen. Now, I don't know if we remember the end of the Battle of the Sinkhole, but one of the brothers was quite badly wounded in the abdomen. So, you would lay odds, Steo, that that is the room. Having done a loop, I shall return to the um, return to the table, sit down, and uh, fortune has smiled upon us. Uh, I managed to not only work out what room um, our friend is in, I saw him on his bed, and I uh, saw that he is quite gravely wounded and in no fit state to take any uh, action. To, the, to such an extent that I suspect that we might just want to go ahead, force the door, grab the crate, put it out the window, and run for it, or walk the, for it, perhaps. Can the windows be opened from the outside? I don't think so, and I believe the windows were closed. Were they closed? Uh, the windows were closed. Um, they certainly there may be a way to kind of pick them if that's if, if that's your thing from the outside, but um, certainly not easily. Yeah, the windows in my room, the windows were pretty secure. 
So I don't think that plan's got legs. The window was closed. So we have we have two complications right now. One is whatever we're about to do, we don't want to be interrupted by Ascarai's messenger. <laughs> the the other is that we need to have enough of us file it through that door to get to room three, knock the door down uh, without raising the attention of the bouncer. But if I'm we can dressed. do that, we can get the crate out and then we're done. I'm not I... sure how you would knock a door down quietly. Um, how how sturdy was the door to my room? Is, I'm, I'm I'm aware of Alindra's prowess. Is is it one? Is it a one Alindra job or a two Alindra job? It's, def <laughs> it's definitely a one Alindra job. It was it had like a little latch, but not like you know a big bolt or anything like that. You think one sharp blow would would, would certainly knock the latch off your door? Um, they're not terribly sturdy. They're made to look good rather than be you know massively. Uh, protective. Um, and certainly there's a fair amount of noise in this common room from kind of shouts from the chefs and plenty of people at tables. Like, yeah, if it took one sharp blow, you think you m might not draw people's attention, but maybe you would. So, um, And on the other side of that door, there is a man, and if we knock it down, he will almost certainly shout for help. Are we not just best off at this point is knocking on the door and hoping that he can answer it. Um, Steo said that it's possible that he can't answer it. It's it's possible. It's possible that he will just say, let yourself in. Let me hear what you have to say. And then we don't raise suspicions that way. Yeah, we're immediately going to raise suspicions now as well, because why would we, the third brother, be informed when he can't move to assist the two that are accidented? Um, Alindra, I'm I'm going to let you know that the doors are, are latched, not bolted. I, You could probably knock on it hard enough and open it. And you could do so without uh, attracting too much attention, given the ambient noise in here. Right, we need at least one person to stay in here to stop any messengers from coming through. I can do that. I will go and open the door. I will need somebody with me once I've opened the door to make sure that we can suppress this Templar whilst also getting the crate out. Ideally, the two of us that go in should have ways to cover our faces once we've gone through that door there. I will um, be outside the window to receive the crate as you pass it out to the window. Right, so who's coming in with me? That will well, leave me Varen. as Askarai isn't here. Right. So Anton is stopping Askarai's messenger if it comes through. Aaron and I are going through there to pay our friend a visit. Steo's waiting outside the window. Okay. Um... I am, will take the chest without waiting for you, and I will take it straight to... We're in the south. We're in kind of the west, central west of, of, of Thistlehold, are we? You are in the southeast of Thistlehold. <clears throat> southeast, so completely the wrong way. Um, I will take the crate straight to the salons. It's close enough. Okay. It's a fair walk through Thistlehold, but yeah, I mean, that's where you're going, so. Um, let's regroup in an hour at Pick a Tavern, not the Witch and Familiar, not the agency. Brew again. Brew. Okay. Father so, um, will you. Um, hold on to the more distinctive of my weapons. Oh, sorry, was that just at me? I think I missed that. Yeah, as yeah, yeah. the one not going to commit a direct <laughs> crime. <laughs> of, of course, it does. This will be tight quarters anyway. Better for knife work. <laughs> uh, so, 
I just Let's... don't want the Dar family blade being found no, at the absolutely. site of a breaking and entering. So it sounds like we've got quite the plan set up. So on that, let's go to Askarai. Um, Askarai, <laughs> can you give me a um, vigilant roll at plus one, please? This is going to be like a one, and I'm going to get Here the most the reliable, one. greatest messenger to ever He's walk. already run yeah. there and is diving yeah. through the door. <laughs> okay. I rolled an 11. I actually make it. Okay. Um, you find yourself... Um, you know what? People in the chat were were howling out, howling for the messenger goblin to one of the messenger goblins to turn up again. So you find a a, a young uh, goblin with a with a kind of like a um, an interesting kind of woolen cap to uh, take uh, said message for you, and they're just kind of like not not too far away. You've just had to go a couple of streets to find a little gathering of urchins on the corner. Um, some of them kind of selling trinkets and a couple of the others offering their their services as messengers and um, kind of couriers and things like that. And yeah, you can uh, hand them a coin and what what you know, they're kind of looking up at you cap in hand. What 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 message would you like, sir? Okay. I need you to go to room three of the winged ladle inn and sorry, their eyes kind of widen at the winged ladle. <laughs> And deliver this message. Tell the man inside that there's been a serious accident at the, was it the North Gate? The East Gate? The East Gate. The yeah. East Gate. And that he needs to go there urgently. If anyone asks you who gave you this message ever, tell them that it was a man in Templar armor. And if you do this well, and find me in a week's time, I'll give you two shillings more. Uh, but, but two shillings? Where? Where? Well, just find me, wherever. I'm not going to tell you where I'm going to be, but if you find me around town, I'll owe you two shillings. I'll, I'll find you, sir. I'll find you. Um, he he speeds off <laughs> towards the wing ladle. Um, so, <laughs> John's loving this. <laughs> um, so, having masterfully completed that part of the plan, which is interfering with the rest of the plan, yes. um, let's uh, cut back. So, Anton, you're still sat in the common room. Um, House Dar Sword at your side. Looks for, like it. Yep. Um, and Steo is stood on the boardwalk on the other side of that window, kind of loitering with intent. Um, Elindra and Askarai, I'm assuming you're going to try and go through that door kind of on the down low, like, you know, <clears throat> so as not to be noticed doing so. Uh, I was I was thinking casual, like, before I get up and leave, I will say to Anton, if we're not back out in half an hour, leave. Half an hour, yeah. Um, uh, so, Elindra and Aaron, why don't you give me discreet roles, please, just to see how, you know, yeah, how yeah, casual you're being. Let's Are we going that. to try and find something to cover our faces with? I, was, I would I, say you have, you have like kerchiefs or can pull your... That's fine. Yeah. lindra has got a tabard. She can okay. rip bits off. Tabard face. I uh, like, I'm like. i not going to do that until after we've gone through that first door there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the yeah. corridor yeah. outside the That's room. probably, uh, Excuse probably me, the thing to do. All right, so discreet roll. That is... Um, it's not quite my dump stat, but it's close. It's not great, is it? Oh, it's a pass. It's a fail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Elindra, you managed to, to slip through that door. You, you're pretty sure no one's the wiser. Aaron, as you're coming through, uh, well, let's say let's say Aaron goes through first, and as you're going through, one of the guests kind of comes through and kind of they don't you know they don't like what are you doing? They they don't know you might have a room here, uh, but they do kind of cross and, and kind of look, kind of look you up and down in your your clothes, kind of slightly threadbare, but still you know noble um, noble uh, clothing, uh, and they kind of look you up and down and say, "Good morning, sir," and kind of walk through the door a kind of like maybe a, a slightly portly um older gentleman with a, a kind of a red ruddy face and um a, a bright shiny nose um and yeah you you've definitely been clocked like he could absolutely give someone a description of you if needed i think he saw me too late now <laughs> Um, so, um, from Steve's description, you find what uh, is almost certainly door three. 
which obviously in this long, quite nice, nicely carved wooden corridor kind of just looks like any of the other doors, only it has a three on it. Okay, I am going to pull out my dagger mm -hmm. <coughs> and see if I can use that to force the lock. So I'm, I'm sort of hoping to be able to use strength, but kind of levering rather than just shoulder barging the door oh. down. So we're not bothering with the knock, the knock first plan. No, no. I, I, did, I didn't agree with that part of the plan. I, I will, <laughs> as you are drawing your dagger and presumably jamming it into the door jam, I will say, well, are we going to knock? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, there's a brief pause and then uh, a quite strained voice on the other side of the door says, what? I looked at Aaron. We've got an urgent message for you. Message from who? Uh, from you. I, I don't know. Some Templars. I mean, they, they are brothers. I, I have mentioned this multiple okay, times. Okay, your brothers. My brothers. Uh, a moment. Uh, you hear kind of a creak behind the door and uh, the sound of um, some kind of slow footsteps and the door clicks and opens. Can we have an image, uh, please, John, of um, one of these brother? well, this specific brother, um, who everyone but Aaron saw at the, uh, at the sinkhole. That was the cunning role I was making for you, by the way, Aaron, because we were figuring out, oh, what? who would be the best person to go see him and not give the game away? And I was like, well, Aaron hasn't ever met him, so probably oh. Aaron Dark. Um uh, but yeah, that's what it looks like. Obviously, he's not wearing the armor. He's wearing kind of linen undershirt, and he has that that kind of quite elaborately tied poultice uh, around his midsection. Um, yeah, he's opening the door. Are we taking any immediate action? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Throwing um, our weights against the door. Yeah, I'm pushing right forward into the room. I want to knock him off his. I mean, feet he has open. He's opened the door. You don't need to push the door open. The no, door but is I mean, open. But I mean, as soon as the door's open, I want to be on this guy, hand over sure. mouth, knock him to the floor. Sure, absolutely. Well, um, why don't we, in that case, uh, he's wounded, so I'm going to add a bit more to that. Um, why don't you give me a strong roll at um, minus three, please? Uh, is there any, because I was also, well. Mm. Is that I'm... worth an XP? <laughs> I think it is, you know. I've got one XP be. unspent, and I've failed that roll. Well, there we go, then. Aaron will get a chance if you don't, if, if Aaron would do the similar thing. But I don't think Aaron's strong is his particularly good suit. Um, um, it's not terrible. It's better than my persuasion and discreet. Okay. Um, no, I think I'll, I'll spend the XP and go for the re-roll here. Okay. Which I roll a 20 on. Oh. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Elindra, well spent. as soon as the door opens, you kind of like, you know, obviously like kind of leap forward with intent. Um, despite uh, the man's obvious woundedness, his uh, clearly his combat instincts kick in. He takes a step back and just kind of swings one hard fist. Um, right at your face. Um, can someone? Does anyone know what uh, a punch? How much damage a punch does? Is it a D four or? It's a D four. It's a D four. Um, okay, then I'm going to roll a D four. And obviously, this won't be armor because you know I'm going to see how how hard he manages to clock you. Um, and that's just a two. Um, so maybe that's a that's a black eye in the morning. Maybe uh, he punches you hard and you kind of reel back. Uh, he seems to be toppling backwards as he's doing this from the exertion. Aaron, what are you what are you doing? Are you gonna roll roll strength now? I'm gonna uh, quickly remove this to have a quick look at my character sheet. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to drop it again from the exertion of striking Alindra. Uh, roll strong a minus two, please. Okay. Could I, if I was going more for his legs for a trip, could I argue a quick roll, or would it 
no. still be strong. No, because that's it okay. would still be strong because that's yeah. still the strength of doing it, not the makes sense. No matter how fast you do it, if you can't overpower him. Success. There we go. Um, so he's kind of already reeling backwards from the blow as Elindra is presumably kind of uh, like clutching at your face from where he struck you. Uh, and yeah, you dive towards him and you can kind of spear him essentially, um, catching him uh, where he's wounded around the midriff. He gives kind of a, a low strangled cry and topples kind of backwards to the ground and is just kind of like rolling there, clutching at uh, his wound with a kind of rictus of pain across his face, sort of gasping for breath. Uh, and presumably, are you going to like kind of try and you know are you are you hand over mouth? Are you gagging him, or what's what's going on? Um, I'm trying. I probably can't gag. Start again. I'm going to try and gag, like put my hand over his mouth, mm -hmm. but also like pull the bed sheets over his face so he can't see us as well. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah. Does that make sense? Don't know Kinda. If that makes sense. I'm just trying to figure out in my room if you're right next to the bed, because you're probably not. Um, it's probably a bigger room than I'm thinking of. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, kind. But you know what? Actually, on the plan, the bed is kind of close to the door. So I I'll go with yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can do that. You can you kind of pull the sheet over and just kind of um, smother, I think is the word. Smother or him. Or trying to smother um, him. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can kind of like you're wrapping the sheet round his head, right? So he can't see and he maybe he can't be heard particularly loudly. Yes. And probably can't breathe. No. Well. <laughs> I, I don't see why that wouldn't be the case, but sure. I don't want to suffocate him. <laughs> uh, well, for the moment, he's not suffocating, but he, he's clearly in a lot of pain and you're kind of like, you know, normal people, I think, put a cloth around someone's eyes rather than just drag bed sheets and hold them down over a wounded man's face. Because that is smothering someone, not blinding someone with cloth. So, and then um, just sort of pulling it over, not like wrapping it around his head, just like drawing it over. I... Okay, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, he's got a sheet on his head. Yeah. Uh, um, God knows how he'll get out of that. And uh, yeah, but no, you've got him kind of pinned down. Um, you've pulled kind of this, this sheet over. So he kind of, he's not really thrashing at this point. He's in a lot of pain. Um, but yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Elindra, you, I, I assume you're getting in that room and closing that door quickly. Yes. Step in, close the door. Start looking for a crate. Directly under the bed, there is a crate that exactly matches uh, Decamedo's description. Okay, so assuming that Aaron Dar looks like he's has this guy pinned, he certainly does for the moment. Maybe he'll start fighting back, but at the moment, he's just seems to be in a lot of pain. I will open the window. I mm -hmm. will try, try to lift the crate out of the window. You very, very easily lift the crate, drag the crate out from under the bed and lift it up. Okay. Very easily. Like Almost it's no weight to it at all. Okay. Fuck. No rattle. Fuck. Right. Let's have a look around in the room for something that looks heavy and about the size to fit into the crate. Sure. Um, why don't you give me a, um, yeah, give me a vigilant roll. <clears throat> vigilant. And you know what you're looking for, so you know what, take a plus two. Cool. I might well need it. I need a 12, we roll a five. Okay. You have a very quick look around the room. I mean, it's a nice room, but there's not a lot of places, you know? Um, and it's directly onto the, the boardwalk, so, you, you know, there's nothing underneath. Um, there's nothing underneath the beds. There's nothing in kind of just looking at this little floor pan. There's a couple of little cabinets next to the beds. Uh, there's nothing in those that looks likely. Uh, there's a couple of religious texts and some, you know, just kind of trinkets, maybe maybe a pipe, maybe a um, kind of a, a small dagger. Um, there is a desk with some drawers and you open those and it's just small clothes, linens. There is nothing in this room that likely fit into this chest. And on that note, I think we'll wrap up the session there. 
Um, so if anyone's got any comments or questions, um, please leave them in the chat and we'll pop them up here. In the meantime, um, let's go through our promo as the players look increasingly... Fr I didn't write it. Don't blame me. Um, if you check below, there's some links. There's links to Twitch and to YouTube. If you've watched this on one, please do check out the other. Give us a subscribe and a follow and all those wonderful things. Um, there's links to our social media um, to our Discord and to our Patreon. You can check those out if those things intrigue you. We run three weekly streams here on Twitch. Uh, we have Shadows of Estrin, which is usually on Mondays, but kind of on Tuesdays at the moment. Keep checking our schedule and you'll find out where, where it might be. Um, Simbroom is on Wednesdays, of course, that's this. And Thursdays is currently Cincinnati Chronicles, which is our World of Darkness anthology series. Um, we're currently on the Mage the Ascension arc, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so we also do one-shots on the first weekend of every month. That includes this coming weekend uh, on Sunday, February the 6th, where we'll be playing Tales from the Loop as a self-contained story. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, John's going to be playing that, and Steve's going to be playing that. Other Steve, not Stephen. Steve, Steve, Stephen, Steve. Um, and Inga is going to be playing it as well. Uh, I'll run it. It's going to be really good. I really love Tales from the Loop. Come join us this Sunday, three o'clock in the afternoon, GMT. Uh, yeah, John, comment us. May I just say before we start that in terms of team performance this week, that wasn't very great. <laughs> no, no, you may not. That was an appropriately <laughs> bad pun. Another, another pun to be bad. struck off the record. Um, from Sam, it's like the crate is holding nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing <laughs> at all. <laughs> 42. How annoyed at the players. Are they as annoyed as me watching them plan that heist for an hour and a half? <laughs> you should have learnt your annoyed. lesson after Blades in the Dark. I'm not annoyed in the slightest. <laughs> I spent an XP to botch that strength roll. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think I'm done. Can we can we roll up some D and D characters? <laughs> you think Not with sorry, me, well. <laughs> you think D and D would lead to less arduous planning and wacky hijinks? As we I think Sam's rolls at something. least would make it a very easy walk in the park. Oh, I'd have been I amazing. Mean, Mark would be the best D &D. roller in D and D. We should try it. <laughs> right, there we Sam go. and Mike yeah. play D and D whilst at the same time <laughs> the rest of us play Simbrew. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One game, two rule systems. Uh, well, for Mike, Asker, I can no longer be called a shapeshifter at this point. He's just a shape. Yeah, not even a, a good shape. Not even a good shape. <laughs> My God, um, His mind has been corrupted by colors, sounds, and shapes. Um, we yeah. had uh, a couple of guests for a couple of guesses for what's in the box. Obviously, now nothing. Uh, Steve, <laughs> I hope the wooden crate contains a small, cute but unruly animal that escapes and causes hijinks. With the follow-up, it's just snakes. <laughs> Lots of corrupted snakes. <laughs> if only <laughs> that would be better. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> uh, I was looking forward. Like I, I'm glad we timed that right because I was looking forward to to that reveal. Right? You wouldn't. Yeah. We wouldn't have had the cliffhanger if we hadn't had the hour and a half of planning first. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it all Absolute it all worked out. Anyway. It, it, it <laughs> I makes, didn't write it. <laughs> it makes so much. It makes, makes so much more sense now when you sort of talked about the two Templars like leaving to kind of hurry us up because we were massively over elaborating. I, on you it. were, and I, I part, that was part, but but I was thinking because I know their schedule and there's a thing in the book for like rolling to see where they might be at any particular time, and they do like have. Around then would be around a trigger point for it. So I, hmm. there was a justification, but also I was like, if I don't move them forward in some way. Um, but I might have rolled badly and gone, no, they're not leaving yet. So you just get to carry on talking. Can, so, can you really imagine? Love... Oh, sorry, Sam. <laughs> no, I, I just really love that we didn't at any point think to look in the window. Like, Steve no, kind of walked by. Yeah, like, but you went Before to then, see if the means. window was big enough to fit a crate out of. We didn't ever think, Let's look in the window of this room to see if there's a person in there or what, like, it's, is there a crate? I would like to say, 
I did want to suggest looking in the window, like towards the beginning, but you were all having so much fun talking <laughs> about wearing fake mustaches and pretending to be beard livery men. That I just it's... didn't want to ruin it. It's not a criticism at all. In fact, it's not definitely not a criticism of these players. It's just something that always kind of amuses me as someone who's run so many things with tasks to be done and stuff. Um, how often players will spend half an hour, an hour more planning something without just going to look first? Like, without like, oh, well, let's let's check it out first and then we'll make a plan. Instead, they'll be like, well, if it's like this and if it's like that, rather than just going and looking. Um, again, that is genuinely no criticism because it's just in the moment you're trying to like think of things, and I understand it. It just always, it, it never fails to tickle me. I, th I think, I think my thought process was that like we, like we, if we go and have a look, then everyone knows our faces, and then we've got to go out and buy the fake mustaches and uh, comedy <laughs> that, eyebrows that John was talking about. Yeah, fortune in fake mustaches. How many thaler is that? It's got to be a thaler or a mustache, surely. <laughs> thaler per mustache. We are going right. I'm just trying to picture how disastrously it would have gone if we'd actually gone with the beer delivery salesman. <laughs> yeah. oh, like, there were so many. I was loving it though. That, that was a, <laughs> that was a that was a wacky hijink right there. Um, a single <laughs> a singular wacky hijink. Um, what have we got next, John? Uh, oh, Mike, we bloody love rendering <laughs> services. Yeah, we are protagonists. Yeah. And paying people for services rendered. Mm. Uh, like the, the little goblin messenger who's about to go up and... If Anton <laughs> doesn't get him before he goes in, he is about to walk into way <laughs> more than he bargained for. Yeah. The thing is that that goblin's now incentivized to the tune of two shillings to let nothing <laughs> standing in his way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's about to fight a priest uh, <laughs> for two shillings. And Tom's about to throw a goblin child off a <laughs> off a tree. <laughs> um, oh, no. uh, Mala say, uh, "I wonder if Anton is concerned about Steos not knowing what's good or evil anymore." <laughs> oh. Yeah. God, oh, my spirit has left my body. I think we're all concerned <laughs> about that, honestly. Um, although replaced steer with Chris, and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a source of constant worry. Um, too much. <laughs> would you find some priest <laughs> for two shillings? <laughs> hey, I mean, kid, would you find a priest? <laughs> um, but I don't know. I can't remember what shillings I mean, is in modern tender, so. It's yeah. a little bit expensive, but I I, I pay it. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Do more of that and less of the puns, yeah? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not getting paid, mate. I'll do what I want. <laughs> it's true. Um, anything else, John? So at the very beginning of the stretch, we had the, the stream. We had one of those instances where our pre-stream discussion oozes its way into chat oozes uh, <laughs> oh from That's mike very, yeah okay I chat. Just, the you only read <laughs> go go for it go for it okay I'll, i will read this and then we'll give the we will give the context and we'll get some answers from chat here and also comment on this on youtube right mike question for chat hazelnut yogurt a delicious treat or humanity's greatest misstep okay let's just make it clear here Mike believes hazelnut yogurt to be humanity's greatest misstep, and I believe it to be a delicious treat that I had earlier this week and very much enjoyed. Um, Mike uh, decided to yuck my yum and uh, just shat all over it. Just absolutely pile drive the concept of hazelnut yogurt into the ground. Um, repeatedly um, just just absolutely bodied it uh, before we uh, we went live. Yeah. Was there anything you wanted to follow that up with, John? Uh, was there there? Was. there was. There was um, one response straight off. Uh, Steve, as a kid, had a nasty incident where I was promised chocolate mousse, which in fact on delivery turned out to be chestnut mousse, which thinking about it probably explains a lot about my outlook on life. Why um, would you do that to a child? Here we go. Here, here's an inflammatory thing. I prefer the chestnut mousse. Yeah, there we go. I fucking said it. How wrong can you be about <laughs> nut-related condiment? Yum. Chocolate is super boring. It's just one bland sugary flavor. 
How can Especially anyone... if we're talking about like chocolate yogurt or chocolate mousse. Yeah, if you get like fancy nice chocolate, yeah, that can have a flavor to it. But it's but not, the, it's just sugar. The fancy nice chocolate ch- tends to be the stuff with the hazelnuts in it, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hazelnut yogurt. Shit, all Food this. of the gods. It's, it is the most child friendly of all the nuts. Not if you have a nut. For the record, hazelnut, bro- no hazelnut yogurt, Satan's creamy phylactery, <laughs> disgusting. Um, We've got some actual responses from Some chat, responses, let's want. have them. Let's have them. Uh... Uh, Night bites, uh, not qualified to answer. I've had non functional taste buds and smell for the last four years. I can't remember what anything is supposed to taste like. I, I hugely sympathize with that because that sounds like a massive bummer. Uh, although also a weird part of me is jealous of the fact that you must be able to eat super healthily with no concern for like... Like I've always thought that. It sounds horrible to lose your sense of taste. But part of me is always like, ah, oh, but then you could just eat really healthily because you have no other concerns about what you eat. Does that, does well, that make guess... sense? Does that work out, Night Bites? Do you just eat really healthy stuff? But I feel like you'd not? still have the urge to eat unhealthy stuff because your brain is still trying to get the, the yeah fed by like the, the dopamine get. like yeah like the chemical reward of the the bad stuff maybe I don't know um, anyway <laughs> aside from that um, exactly right all the horror tasting stuff that's good for you I can eat no worries and I do there we go hi silver lining you see no. silver lining my father has exactly the same situation due to some phenomenally bad advice he was given by a tem- chemistry teacher in like 1970 um and he eats awfully oh well that's terrible this is this is all going a bit talk radio hasn't it it has a bit hasn't it <laughs> <laughs> this, is Pringles incident. this is this is what people do on twitch this is the shit we need to do all right, um okay. <laughs> Engage the community okay yeah have to say I've never had it, but I do like most hazelnut flavored stuff. Well, then you are you are a blessed individual, Malice. That's all I'm saying. Forty two, never tried it, but can't see why it would be bad. You're in for a discovery. A horrible <laughs> Sprigian, <laughs> non Euclidean taste transfer of oh. Yeah. I'm gonna get some more of that hazelnut yogurt and I'm gonna eat it on stream. I hear it. That's all I'm saying. Patreon exclusive. The next <laughs> that's day we run into is going to be pure hazelnut yogurt. Yeah, this is, is there. A, there is a hazelnut yogurt category on Twitch, right? I th- there'll be one on OnlyFans. Yeah, he's gonna say maybe not the right platform, but <laughs> yeah. monetize it. Sure, why not? There we go. Um, right, my players are uh, are increasingly looking like they want to leave. Uh, ASMR yogurt eating, I'm sure it's a thing. That's the meta. Um, we we missed the hot that... tubs, but we'll hit the yogurt eating. I just can't believe that Matt's in the pocket of big hazelnut yogurt. (laughs) (laughs) A big yogurt. (laughs) I'm putting this one. That would just go so bad. Uh, If Mike rolls a 20, he has to eat a spoon of hazelnut yogurt. Why, Steve? That would be that would be a reward. That would be a reward. He would instantly recognize it as such and say, Matt, I'm sorry I'm wrong as I've been about so many things. If you've got this far in the YouTube VOD, look, congratulations. I, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. I'm sorry. This is why go. you stick around after the end of the role playing. Yeah, this is That's the this, this is the content. <laughs> Um, all right, on that note, folks, uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks to, so much to my wonderful players for playing. Uh, and we'll catch you next week um, for more Simba Room. Uh, yeah, if you get this far, right? Hazelnut in the comments. Um, yeah, we'll catch you next week for more Simba Room. Until then, take, st- take care and stay safe. And we'll see some of you tomorrow night for Cincinnati Chronicles and some of you on Sunday for Tales from the Loop. Goodbye.